Meet Louie, a California king snake. Different kinds of snakes eat a wide variety of foods, but king snakes earn their reputation as kings because of their penchant for eating other snakes. Did you ever wonder how long it takes for a king snake to consume an entire snake? Well, the timer's running in the corner of your screen, and we're about to find out. The garter snake Louie is eating was run over on a bike trail just a couple hours earlier. As soon as Louie discovered the small lifeless serpent, he knew it was lunchtime and his predator instinct kicked right in. He is accustomed to eating frozen rodents here at the sanctuary and had never even seen a garter snake in his life as far as we know. But as soon as he met this one, he began to swallow him like a giant piece of spaghetti. If the garter snake had been alive, this process would have probably taken much longer. King snakes are constrictors, and although constrictors don't have venom, they strike hard and fast to subdue their prey, and then they wrap coils of their body around their prey and begin to squeeze. My friend Bob Ferguson filmed an eastern king snake constricting a ringneck snake in the wild. Notice how the eastern king snake has wrapped itself around the ringneck snake to subdue and constrict it. After a minute and 45 seconds, this snake is making progress, but he still has a long ways to go. Let's hope he has at least a half hour lunch break. Although king snakes do not have venom, some venomous snakes also consume other snakes. The most famous is the king cobra, which is the world's longest venomous snake. These photos show a venomous coral snake eating a non-venomous coffee snake on one of Bob Ferguson's expeditions through Costa Rica. Although Bob did not observe the coral snake envenomating the other snake, that process would probably take additional time as well. The majority of snake species do not usually eat other snakes, but there are many that do. King snakes are probably the most well-known examples. King snakes are classified within the genus Lampropeltis, which also includes milk snakes. Recently, John Logan was walking through his backyard in Pennsylvania when he stumbled across this eastern milk snake consuming a northern brown snake. A few other non-venomous snakes that prey on their venomous neighbors include coach whips, indigo snakes, and racers. Jared Skibo stumbled across this northern black racer who is eating a young timber rattlesnake one morning for breakfast. It's not unusual to find racers hanging out near the rocky basking areas where timber rattlesnakes are born, just waiting to tread on them. Non-venomous snakes that prey upon venomous snakes have developed an immunity or tolerance to venom. These non-venomous constrictors are typically very muscular, like the Arnold Schwarzeneggers of the reptile world, whereas venomous snakes often have very soft and heavy bodies, kind of like little scaly Danny DeVitos. A king snake's tolerance to pit viper venom acts like a bulletproof vest against the bites of rattlesnakes, copperheads, and cottonmouths, and renders these otherwise deadly snakes pretty much defenseless against certain non-venomous predators. After four minutes, Louis seems to be making a lot of progress, especially because he did not have to waste time killing his prey. While king snakes and milk snakes exhibit more classic constrictor behaviors to catch their food, some of the other species take a different approach. Racers and indigos are known to overpower their prey without wrapping it up, simply pile driving their meal into the ground like a professional wrestler. By comparison, king snakes and milk snakes wrapping coils around their prey seems downright civilized. Reticulated pythons are the longest snakes in the world, and I've heard reliable accounts of them eating all kinds of things. I spoke to a colleague whose reticulated python got loose in their reptile building once and ate three alligators before they noticed the cage was open. However, we have housed various boas and pythons together on occasion and never observed predatory behavior between these snakes. 
Our Australian Woma Python, though, is a different story. Woma Pythons have a king snake attitude, so we'd never house them with anything that we were not planning to feed to them. We once worked with a Woma Python that swallowed an entire leather glove off of its handler. Of all the snakes we work with, king snakes exhibit the most dominant feeding behaviors. On thousands of occasions, I've observed our king snakes noticing their own tails moving and quickly turning and striking themselves. In nearly every case, the king snakes realize they have just bitten their own body and immediately let go. But in all of my years of reptile rescue, there was one case where I walked into the reptile room and discovered one of our newly rescued king snakes actually consuming his own tail. This behavior is often associated with a neurological problem as it is often repeatedly observed from the same individuals in zoos and other captive collections where the snakes are being well cared for. You can click the link if you want to see what happened when I tried to get this snake to stop eating himself. At this point in the process, Louis is about to swallow the vent of the garter snake. The vent, or the cloaca, is the part of the snake where they go to the bathroom, where they do mating, and it's also where they excrete a really smelly musk. Louis doesn't seem to mind that he's eating the vent of the snake right now. Uh, in fact, it doesn't seem to phase him. You'll see he's just constricting those neck muscles, letting more and more of the snake slide down his throat into his stomach. We're now just over seven minutes, and that's how long it took for Louie to work his way down to the tail of the snake. This whole time, you can see he doesn't mind what bugs are around him. He doesn't mind if ants are crawling on him. You can even see the wing of a spotted lanternfly laying there in the leaf litter. These snakes are so singularly focused, they are on a mission, <laughs> even if there's an ant crawling right around his nose, uh, it doesn't seem to bother him. But now that he's on the tail of the snake, it'll be interesting to see how much longer it takes. This little bit of tail may seem like it would be very easy to swallow, but keep in mind, he is not just swallowing this skinny piece of tail. He also has to constrict and slide the entire body of the snake further down his throat, further down his body as he tries to inch his way up to those little pieces of tail. So this is arguably the most difficult process because he's moving the entire snake down his body with each tiny bite he takes of the remaining tail. Louis is so close here to finishing that snake. Do you think he can do it in less than 10 minutes? Right now our timer is hitting nine minutes and he has just about an inch of that little bit of tail left. He's trying to get it down. This is like watching a hot dog eating championship where they're trying to get that final bite in under the buzzer. Come on Louis, you can do it. Get that little bit of tail in before we hit 10 minutes, folks. Look at this. I think we have a winner. Yay! Atta boy, Louie. The king snake has just consumed an entire garter snake, and boy, does he look satisfied. Well, thanks for joining us on this adventure. We set out to answer the question, how long does it take a king snake to swallow another snake? And in this case, it takes under 10 minutes. Pretty amazing. So did you like this video or did you think it was gross? 
please tell us either way. When you comment on the video, that actually helps YouTube suggest our educational videos to more viewers. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe to our channel or visit ForgottenFriend.org to learn more about Forgotten Friend Reptile Sanctuary. Thanks for giving reptiles a chance. We'll see you next time.